we'll go ahead and get started with Jack. Uh, so how about leading us off uh, Chip Towers and then we'll go to uh, Mark Weiser. Um, man, you got to give us a little heads up there. Uh, give me uh, just a second here. How you doing, Jack? Good to see you. Good to see you, Chip. Um, so uh, obviously we're getting inside uh, 10 days, uh, nine days I think there's left. Uh, the last time we saw you, you were uh, disappearing underneath a mob of teammates on the field. Uh, how's this for a simple question? Um, what's happened to you since then? <laughs> How, uh, has your life changed much? You know, not really. Uh, I haven't tried to let it affect me too much. I'm um, not trying to buy into the stardom that much and just trying to live my daily life as I did before. Hey, Jack, how's it going? Good. How are you, Mark? Good, good. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Coach Muschamp. How much is he actually coaching you directly? I know it's a kind of a team effort with special teams. What is his role uh, as it pertains to you as a place kicker? Uh, I would say, as Coach Smart once said, he likes to leave us alone, and so does Coach Muschamp. He brings a lot of fire and energy to the table for special teams as a whole and as a team. Um, but as specialists alone, he kind of lets us do our own thing. But you know, gives us a little energy here and there and makes, makes sure that we're doing the right thing. Okay, uh, we'll go with uh, Anthony Dasher and then uh, Dean Leggy. Jack, good to see you, man. Good to see you, Anthony. Uh, just a simple question. I guess after the year you had last year, did you ever get put on scholarship? Yes, I did. <laughs> you still on it or was that just a, a spring uh, thing? I'm still on it, yes, sir. Right, what did that mean for you to get that? Uh, you know, it meant a lot. Uh, it was always a goal of mine once I got to UGA to work my butt off and some someday to be able to get put on scholarship to pay for school. And now I'm here. So hopefully some, some next level. I don't know what the next step's going to be, but we'll see. Jack, there's through the years have been uh, several of these games with Georgia and Clemson have been decided by field goal kicks. Whether you're talking about Kevin Butler, uh, Chris Gardaki, even the failed attempt by Clemson in 2002. Uh, what do you know about the ha past history of just, say, Kevin Butler's kick in 1984? And uh, have you taken a look at that, that game before? I actually have not taken a look at that game before. That I've heard it in past mention of the notorious um, Kevin Butler kick, I think 60 or some so odd um, yards. But besides that, I have not heard much. Okay, now we'll go to uh, Mike Griffith and then uh, Palmer Toms. Uh, Jack, I want to ask you, when you make a, a field goal like you did in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl to win the game, um, how much carryover is there? Is there, is there something about making a game-winning kick that's kind of self-empowering and gives you just that extra shot? There definitely is, um, but I try not to buy into that. You know, just like preparing for a kick, it's same in, same out. Um, you know, every kick's the same no matter the distance. So once that carryover happens, I need to make sure that I leave it on the field. Uh, if I carry it over, then it might affect me on the next kick, whether it's a good one or a bad one. Jack, Coach Smart was sharing with us that uh, Robbie Disher is, is kind of the – hidden gym in the special teams room and, and, and among those coaches what's what's your interactions with him been like and, and what's his role this is my man uh he's a great guy and we're lucky to have him from louisiana lafayette um you know he's just been a, re a real good guy to have in the room to cheer us up when there's not things going our way maybe and um he's really smart when it comes to the special team scheme and as i said before we're just really lucky to have him all right, we'll continue now with uh, Seth Emerson and Jake Rowland. Jack, I hope this doesn't come off as an insulting question, but last year, obviously, you, you had to win the job and then you had to maintain the job. How do you keep what worked for you last year when you were trying to do that, keep it going in 2021? A lot of it's been um, finding those rights and wrongs that I did last year. And I'll tell you that I, I there weren't many rights. Um, a lot of things I've had to work on and I've had to fix over the off season. A lot of it had to come down to technique. So I'd go and I'd train with a guy um, on the weekends, making sure that I, maybe I simplified my jab step or my drive is a little bit longer here and there. But 
the number one key takeaway I would say is focusing on my mental health aspect of talking with our sports psychologist, making sure that I'm staying positive, whether it's a good day or a bad day. Uh, Jake Roos, did you have a question? Yeah, Jack, I just kind of wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, Clemson special teams. I know that you guys have kind of turned the page now with the end of fall camp. Uh, you know, what have you seen out of, the, you know, their kick coverage unit and, and uh, you know, the guys that are going to be kind of rushing up against you? You know, they've got a really good team and we're just trying to prepare the best that we can. And hopefully it all goes well in Charlotte next week. Go next to uh, Connor Riley and then Davis Baker. Hey, Jack, hope you're doing well. Um, Bank of America, you know, they're going to be full capacity and it's 75,000 people. And I'm pretty sure that's the most amount of people you will have kicked in front of. How do you prepare for that? And sort of what are your expectations kicking in a stadium like that full capacity for the first time in your Georgia career? It's definitely going to be very different. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I meet with sports psychologists pretty frequently. And we discussed about that and we're going to work on that a little bit. I've, I mean, max I've probably kicked in front of is, I don't know, but maybe capacity of 30,000. So it's gonna be very different. Um, it'll definitely come down to mindset over anything, making sure that I just clear my head before every kick and then I see it through. Hey Jack, were there any kickers growing up that you really got inspiration from and who are some of your favorites to watch right now? If I'm going to be honest, I wasn't a football guy until probably end of junior year, beginning of senior year. It was all soccer. So I was a big Messi fan, big Ronaldo fan. Um, but football was the last thing on my mind. And now, I mean, got to look up to Rod, such a great kicker. And probably past time now, who just retired, is Adam Vinatieri. Okay, next we'll go with uh, Dane Young and then uh, Ryan Curley. Uh, hey, Jack, just uh, curious, just the overall uh, team energy, so to speak, uh, as we're a little over a week out, uh, what are you seeing from the practice fields? I mean, Dane, we're excited. I mean, who wouldn't be? We're a week away from playing Clemson in Charlotte at such a beautiful stadium and such a great atmosphere. And we get to welcome home a full capacity stadium and hopefully we'll pack out the stands with dog fans. Hey, Jack, how, how important is, is having the whole spring and, and summer been going into this season versus last when it was not normal? And, and like mentioned earlier, you were fighting for the job and, and now you're going into this season with a full practice under your belt, knowing that you're going to be the starting kicker. How different is it? I would say, um, la or I guess COVID year, I, I think it was my saving grace, if I'm going to be honest, to really go home no, all right, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to figure out what I can do to my best ability. But now that we're in season and that we're in practice full swing, I'm able to put forth that ability um, to the best of my ability. And so just to see it through, to be able to know that I can put all that practice and all that preseason thought into full motion is a great thing. All right, we have time for maybe a couple more questions if anyone has a follow-up. Jack, I, uh, I did want to ask you a little bit about Jared Zirkel. Uh, I, I've heard he's looked really good. It, it, he's gotten bigger, kicking better. And, uh, and how much of a competition is that? And how much of a um, collaboration is that when you got a, a, another kicker like that on your squad? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, we push each other day in and day out. And not only is it a competition, but as you mentioned, Chip, we are helping each other fix things. I mean, whether it's my swing or if it's his jab step, we're there for each other. Um, and I think it's always good to have competition. Friendly competition does not hurt. Thank you. Jack, there were some uh, talks, I guess, reports that, that maybe you had a NIL with Onward Reserve. Did that ever come to fruition? It did not. Can, can you elaborate? Did you, did you communicate with them at all after that July 1st date? We talked and stuff, and we just uh, – we couldn't come to a deal. It just didn't end up working out. 
Do you have uh, this is Chip? Do you have any NILs? I have a few. Uh, pump Hi, everyone. That's uh, that's all the time we have now for uh, Jack. We thank you for joining us this evening and uh, stand by for our next student athlete. Thank you, Jack. Thank you.